The name itself suggests a higher level of intensity. The GT2 racing version of the 2024 Mercedes-AMG GT Coupe is expected to be sharper, fiercer, and, of course, swifter than its GT3 counterpart. The AMG GT3 racer we experienced in 2019 marked a significant advancement over the GT4 model, boasting increased power, enhanced downforce, and a purpose-built chassis and suspension finely tuned for the ultimate lap performance. Generally, a lower number signifies a more serious race car, right? Not so fast. The latest GT2, part of Mercedes-AMG's meticulously engineered lineup of factory-built sports racers, doesn't follow the traditional hierarchy of GT3 and GT4. Instead, it serves as a middle ground between the two. Designed to outpace the entry-level GT4, the GT2 is crafted to be less demanding at the limit compared to the professional-grade GT3. The GT2 designation owes its existence to Stefan Radl, the enterprising Frenchman who has played a pivotal role in shaping modern sports car racing since 1995. Radl's SRO Motorsports Group was instrumental in establishing the modern GT4 and GT3 categories, setting rules for the cars and organizing races. In 2018, Radl envisioned a new category tailored for amateur drivers seeking a higher-powered experience than GT4 racers but less specialized than GT3 cars. While GT2 was conceptualized as a transitional category, Radl determined it impractical to rebrand the highly successful GT3 category, which enjoys widespread support from automakers and racing enthusiasts, solely to adhere to a performance hierarchy. So, GT2 it is. Our experience behind the wheel of the Mercedes-AMG GT2 at the circuit Ricardo Tormo, just outside Valencia, Spain, affirms its status as a middle ground between GT4 and GT3. This Mercedes possesses the power and performance to excite even the most seasoned GT4 driver without demanding the pro-driver skill level and commitment needed to achieve a fast lap time in a GT3. The AMG GT2 is built on the foundation of the AMG GT track series, a track day monster derived from the AMG GT4 that we tested last year. Beneath the hood lies the same commanding dry sump, flat plane crank 4.0 liter twin turbo V8. Connected to the sequential shift 6 speed Hewland transaxle transmission used in both GT3 and GT4 race cars via a carbon fiber torque tube. To adhere to GT2 regulations, the engine output is slightly reduced compared to the track series 697 horsepower and 590 lbft of torque, as opposed to 724 horsepower and 627 lbft. Nevertheless, it remains the most potent among the Mercedes AMG GT factory racers. In comparison, the GT3's naturally aspirated 6.3 liter V8 generates approximately 550 horsepower, while the GT4's engine, essentially identical to that of the track series in GT2, is tuned to produce between 400 horsepower and 510 horsepower, depending on the balance of performance regulations in play. Additional distinctions between the GT2 and the track series include a longer top gear allowing the GT2 to reach 201 miles per hour on a lengthy straightaway, a redesigned rear wing offering greater adjustability and crucially, enhanced downforce along with full race centerlock 18-inch wheels. The GT2 undergoes enhancements in engine and brake cooling, acknowledging its purpose for close racing rather than just turning laps in isolation during track days. According to development driver Thomas Yeager, who has been refining race cars for Mercedes-AMG since the SLS GT3 era, the GT2 offers an optional endurance race package. This package includes specialized lighting, a drink system, number illumination, a quick refill engine oil mechanism, and a full tank display. Its multi-link suspension boasts race-spec three-way adjustable shocks, allowing tuning in both compression and rebound, with height adjustability. The front and rear camber settings, along with the front and rear stabilizer bars, are manually adjustable. Employing the 15.4-inch front and 14.0-inch rear steel rotors from the GT3 and GT4 race cars, the brakes feature a balance bar for front-to-rear brake bias adjustment. Following modern GT racing standards, the GT2 is equipped with independently adjustable traction control and anti-lock brake systems, each with 12 settings. 
The cockpit mirrors the user-friendly layout found in other AMG racers. The butterfly steering wheel is tiltable and telescopic, and the center console houses large, fluorescent highlighted switchgear for easy operation, even at night with racing gloves. While the driver's seat is fixed, a lever near the carbon fiber center console controls a spring-loaded pedal box. Adjusting the driving position involves placing your foot on the brake pedal, pulling the lever, pushing the pedals away, and releasing the lever to lock them in place. This design caters to drivers of various shapes and sizes. According to Mercedes-AMG, the GT2 has a baseline weight of 3,086 pounds, although its racing weight may increase to comply with balance of performance regulations. This puts it within about 150 pounds of the GT3's claimed minimum weight, a notable achievement considering the GT2 boasts 26% more power and 22% more torque. The performance dynamics become intriguing when considering that, despite having more power and torque than the GT3, the GT2 only has 50-55% to of the downforce, as stated by Jaeger. This characteristic makes it more accessible for amateur drivers, particularly in fast corners, where the GT3's stiffer suspension and superior aero make it harder to sense the edge of adhesion. The GT2's dynamic limits are easier to reach, providing a more approachable experience, even at higher speeds. While the GT3 remains arguably the most accessible among current GT3 race cars for non-professional drivers, the GT2 quickly establishes itself as a more approachable machine after just a few laps. The robust torque foundation of the flat-plane crank V8 turbo motor ensures a smooth experience, allowing drivers to navigate unfamiliar tracks without trouble. With the GT2, you can rely on traction control to understand throttle modulation and optimal lines. As confidence builds, the intervention threshold can be dialed back, enabling deep braking into corners, powerful acceleration out of them, and a clear sense of tire behavior. Despite its speed and audacity, the Mercedes GT2 is described as formidable but not fearsome. If you pay close attention, the GT2 becomes a valuable tool for refining your driving skills. Each of my 10 consecutive laps at the circuit Ricardo Tormo was faster than the one before. Stepping out of the car, I already had a clear idea of where I could further improve, braking later in one section, accelerating sooner in another, before even consulting the data traces in the garage. It's worth noting that the same data traces also highlight the prowess of the professionals. Comparing my laps to Thomas Jaeger's, it became evident that he was hitting the brake pedal later and with double the pressure, confidently navigating corners where I was still cautiously exploring. However, this also underscores the immense potential of the GT2. In capable hands, it proves to be a genuinely swift and adept racing car. The glossy promotional brochure boldly states, the new Mercedes-AMG GT2 is fully matured as it enters Thanks the stage. Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.